Hey everybody, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. Welcome to episode number 67 of the new Copy and Comic Show. As you can see, I'm not alone. I got my good friend Bob. Bob, how are you? I'm doing well today. How about yourself there, Bueller? I'm not doing bad. He's actually a little under the weather, I so am. we're going to cut him a little bit of slack, <laughs> but not much. But he did uh, make it over here today, and we are drinking some coffee. Mm -hmm. Mine is from Mocha Express. I don't know if his is, no. but Mocha Express is the official coffee shop of Comics with Bueller, mm -hmm. and I picked mine up today, and this is a caramel latte. Oh, nice. And uh, I don't really get a lot of caramel stuff, but I felt like it today, and I bought it, so it was good. I had to buy this one. Oh, you did? Yeah, because the normal the owner wasn't there and Mr. M wasn't there yeah right? and I don't like bothering the other people who are just working there so right. I, I had to pay for my coffee but it was worth it so there you go what about you what are you drinking uh, I myself I brought this from home I used my Keurig and I, I like the donut shop coffee so this is some donut shop coffee with a little bit of vanilla sugary sweetener and just because I've been liking the cinnamon lately it's got some cinnamon in there as well and it's very tasty there you go does it make you feel a little bit better the warmness does it really does well as long as you're warm i'm happy well i appreciate that oh my <laughs> i have been under the weather uh this week folks but i am on the upswing so i'm glad to be here today very nice we are going to change things up okay normally we do a first five and a final five and then we, in between we talk about our topic let me just say this there was a lot of comments on this topic and uh, the topic was what is a true first appearance and we are skipping the first five and the final five to get right into the topic itself. We got nine or ten comments that we're going to read, and it's some good stuff. So I don't want to waste any time. I will let you know that I do have some Patreons who came, uh, supported the channel this week. I will give you a shout out at the end of the video. And then also at the end, we'll tell you what next week's question is going to be. And next week's question is even better than this week's question. I, I don't know how we do it. I don't know either, but, but I, uh, I'm loving it. Absolutely. We, we got a lot of great questions. We actually spent some time the other day coming up with multiple questions that we can ask in the coming weeks and months. Mm -hmm. We thought we were probably going to run out. We are not. We're not going to run out anytime You're going to want to watch this video, this series, every single week. Share it if you'd like to. I'd appreciate that. But like I said, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into the topic. The topic is, what is a true first appearance in comic books? Great topic. And here we go. So Raymond Dean left the comment, and Raymond Dean said, I feel that if a character's whole body appears in frame, in clear view, no shadows, plus have a spoken line, this is a first appearance. When it comes to Wolverine, Hulk 180, which this is 181 right there, mm -hmm. is the first appearance. It's okay to want the first full issue appearance more Hulk 181. It's even okay to be willing to pay more money for the first full issue appearance. I like how he kind of phrases that, the full issue appearance. It's a new term I'm not really familiar with. Mm -hmm. However, by definition, Hulk 180 is Wolverine's first appearance. My opinion is biased, by the way, because I own a copy of Hulk 180. I do not own a copy of 181. A lot of people say that. Right. <laughs> it, it, it depends on what they own. Yeah, absolutely. Type thing. Absolutely. Um, but what's your thoughts on that? I mean, we're jumping right into the Hulk 180 and 181. And really, that is the cornerstone of this argument, what a first full appearances. This is the one that gets referenced time after time again for years. This has been the one. What's your thoughts? So, I mean, really, you know, I, I think a lot of the passion comes out when this particular issue comes up. Number one, because number 181 is worth so much money. Yes. Uh, I, I, th I think that is going to be your bigger issue when it comes to the argument inside of this. But really, if you want to take money out of it, and come down to what is a first, I mean, a true first appearance. Uh, I mean, people have criteria on, on what this stuff should actually be. Yeah. I mean, so passionate that it reminds me of, of when the Council of Carthage got together to basically debate on what was canon inside the Bible. That's how passionate comic book readers are about this stuff. And so, I mean, for my money, uh, I, I mean, I technically, yeah. Hulk 180, yeah. right? Uh, I'm not one of those that owns a 181, yeah. right? But if I did, I'd be I'd be defending that one. There you go. <laughs> and I think that's more the point. I, I think that um, he brings in a, to the fact that when a 
the character has a full body appearance. I don't necessarily think it needs to be a full body. I mean, I don't need to see someone from head to toe. Mm -hmm. I just need to be able to identify who that character is. So from the torso up type thing, obviously the face sure. or something is the main thing for view. He references the Hulk 180 and 181, and that's going to be referenced quite a bit in this video. Sure. Um, in the very last page of Hulk 180 is the panel where you see Wolverine, and it is from head to toe. Head to toe. It's And claws are out, and he's saying his name yep. and everything. But everyone still considers the 181 the one to get. I understand why, and I will tell you this. And my, I have a theory on that. Okay. My theory is that it's an awesome-looking cover. Mm. And if you swap the covers between those two books and put 181's cover on 180 and put 180's cover on 181, the argument there would be no argument. People would say 180 is the first appearance. There's no argument. He's on the cover. Look at the cover. He's in the book. There you go. But I think because that cover has now become so iconic, yeah. the 181, I think that's why so many people prefer that book, even though it's not his first true appearance. And honestly, a lot of people said that. A lot of people in the comments were all like, yep, 180 is the first appearance of Wolverine. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of people said that, and I, I would tend to agree. Uh, and that's a great point that you make about the cover because, you know, when I was growing up and I did have this book when it first came off of the newsstands, uh, I, you know, when I picked up 180, to me that was a book about Wendigo. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. And, and you know. Winnebago. Me, Winnebago. There you go. Yeah. But to me, it wasn't a book about Wolverine. You know, you got the character at the end. Nobody knew who the heck Wolverine was at the time, so yeah. it didn't excite me. Uh, you know, but really, that you know, when I pick up that comic book, it was about that villain. It wasn't about Wolverine at all. So yeah. I, it's a, it's a good point. Very much so. Okay, let's move on to the next comment. This is from Ed Blackwell. When looking for a true first appearance, ask these questions. And this guy has criteria as well. And a lot of people had that. They had their own criteria for a first appearance. Does the character appear in full view, not just a limb or a voice, but full view that you can say yes? That is the character, and that's kind of identifying, being able to identify that character for the first time. Sure. Is the character part of the story? Well, I think that if they're in the book, they're automatically in the story, you know. Right. I don't, because uh, they're in the book, and it's not an advertisement or something like that. They're actually in the book. Uh, is the character speaking to another character? In Amazing Spider-Man number 299, and this is such a, a very similar thing to the Hulk 180-181, uh, but Amazing Spider-Man number 299, Venom is clearly in full view and is speaking to another character. So Amazing Spider-Man number 299 is Venom's first appearance and 300 is his first full story. Incredible Hulk 180 and 181 is the same thing. Like I said, very similar. Everyone wants the first full story of these characters, but those are not the first appearances. Interesting. So first story... Mm -hmm. Or first appearance, what would you rather have? So I, I, I have an opinion on this as well. Um, I think part of the problem when it comes to trying to identify these things is the fact that we are reading serialized storytelling. We're reading uh, you know content that has been serialized. And when you get to the end of a story arc inside, and, and this used to be true inside of films, just as much yeah. as it is in the comics, when you get to the end of a story arc, uh, you had your your uh, you know definite confirmed ending, but at the very end of that story would be a little bit because you wanted to make sure that everybody knew that yeah. the saga was going to continue. Yeah. And so you'd get this one little snippet of where we're going next, and then the next show would begin that next story arc. Sure. And that's the way it happens inside of comic books. I think inside of 181, or something mean 180, you had the story arc where you have a Wendigo, and then you get to the end, and you see here's Wolverine, and that's going to be our next story. Yeah. And then boom, we do have our first full Story, yeah. and I, I think uh, you're not going to be able to get away from that inside a comic. I just read a comic book today, same type of thing. The Flash, end end of a story arc, but the very last page, something happens, which is the beginning of the next story. Yeah. Now, does that mean that that book is the actual beginning? Not really. It's just saying this story is going to continue. Tune in next week, people. You know, yeah, you need the hook at the end or the cliffhanger or whatever you want to call it. Exactly. Um, like I said, I do believe as long as the character's in the book. Mm -hmm. It's part of a story type thing. That's kind of how I see it. Even though uh, 
I don't know, maybe the interaction might not be there. It's part of the story. It it's is. part of the, the lore of the book. Um, but I like the, the 299 because the Amazing Spider-Man 299, it's almost, like I said, it's almost identical to the Hulk 180, 181. I don't know if you're familiar with ASM 299, but yes. the last panel, it's Venom. He's got a little blurb or whatnot, and it's a full view of Venom. Mm-hmm. I don't hear that argument as much. I hear mostly hear people like, number 300 is the first appearance of Venom. Right. Uh, but in reality, it's not. Refresh my memory. I, I, I don't quite remember. I haven't read ASM 299 in a long time. Is the name Venom actually mentioned in the last panel of It's that? on the panel. It it's on, on the panel. Actually, we'll put a graphic up here. Okay, okay. You can take a look. Well, you can't see the graphic because I'll put it in the editing. Right, but right, right. Uh, it'll pop up here on screen. But you can take a look at it. It actually says Venom on there and stuff. And, uh, you know, he's right there. He's like, I think it's in the sewer, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Big, huge, full body thing. Yep. Now, that's an interesting character, okay? Because what about Secret Wars number eight? Ah, that's, you mean, I mean, that's go. a whole nother ball of wax. Sure, I it mean, is. When, when you sit there and you see Spider Man, that ball drops down mm-hmm. and it infects his suit or whatnot, that's the symbiote, if I'm not mistaken, correct? It, it is. I mean, you could look at that as the first full appear, or first appearance of Venom. Yeah. I mean, if you really wanted to be technical about it, that's a great point. Um, but, you know, again, if Amazing Spider-Man 299 has the same dynamic that Hulk 180 does, why yeah. is the argument not the same? Yeah, that's that to me is is there's the I think the last comment that we're gonna read sums it all up. I think so. And <laughs> it's a small comment, and it was probably my favorite one. I might not agree with it, right, right, but it actually sums up quite a bit, and we'll get there in in a, in a few minutes. All right. But before we get to um, the next comment. I did a little bit of research, and I just wanted to read this as far as a definition of okay. these things, as far as a definition of a cameo, okay? A cameo, a definition, is a single and often brief dramatic scene played by a well-known character, mm-hmm. okay? That's considered a cameo. You hear that cameo phrase a lot, oh, that's the first cameo, but the character at the time is not well-known. Okay, mm-hmm. because it's the first appearance. You don't know a cameo by definition is a established character making a brief appearance. So how they kind of correlate, you know, and the people say that's a cameo. It can't really be a cameo if that character is not established. That that's by definition only. And I kind of wanted to look at that a little bit. That's a great point. Another thing is a uh, definition of first appearance is the act of beginning something new. Okay, mm-hmm. and something new is a brand new character. Okay, right. The act of that character or seeing that character that is something new. That is the definition of a first appearance. Now these are loose terms. They're not necessarily on referring to comic books, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to look up the definition of what they say that is. And then also I looked on Go Collect. Mm-hmm. Okay, and as far as their definition. And Go Collect said the cameo is a character appearing on only a few panels or even just one panel in an interior page. Basically, the cameo is a very limited intro to the character, a teaser. A good example of a cameo is the Hulk 180. Now, what they just said does not match up with the definition no. of cameo. No. And no offense to Go Collect, but they're just kind of making up their own rules. And I'm not trying to be mean, but really they just kind of decided that. And a lot of them did. A lot right, of them right. do. I mean, this is not just Go Collect, but somewhere in their timeline they said, okay, we're going to define this for our thing. Uh, CGC probably did the same thing. We're going to define this so we can put this on the terms on our slabs. Uh, PGX, all the people who grade it, they had to go through and define these terms over Street Price Guide type thing. Right. Um, that's why I want to just point out that these are the generic descriptions of what those terms are 
cameo and first appearances. That's awesome. Thank you very much for researching that and bringing that up. If you read those first two definitions, they sound like you're talking about comic books, yeah. right? Even though they're, 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 they're general definitions. The Go Collect um, description or definition, uh, I believe the industry has kind of set that, yes. you know, and, and they've just gone along with what most people believe a first or, or you know, a cameo or first appearance is. Yeah. And so, you know, I can't fault Go Collect for yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but when it comes down to what the world thinks, yeah. right, those descriptions sure do fit what we're talking about here, yeah. you know, as far as what a cameo is. And if you look at Hulk 180, yeah. that's a cameo. Yeah. Based on that definition. Well, I don't agree with that. <laughs> Here we go, folks. <laughs> uh, Bob, you're up next. Sure thing. And the next uh, um, comment comes from Norrin J. Powell. Thank you very much, Norrin. He says, I've been seriously collecting for 31 years and semi-seriously prior to that. Over the time, I've come to a conclusion regarding a true or real first appearance. There are three criteria, and they are as follows. Number one, the character must be shown from head to to at least mid thigh, no, uh, not hidden in the shadows, no, no back to the reader, none of that. Clearly visible from head to mid thigh. Number two, do they speak? If so, that goes towards being a first appearance. Standing visibly in silence may disqualify that first appearance. I like how he's really clarifying. What if it was it snake eyes? <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> oh, never mind. That's all. Or echo, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, okay. And number three is uh, if the character has a costume, are they wearing it? Along with that, if they have a power or ability, do they show or utilize that power or ability? And if so, that goes towards being qualified as a first appearance. Well, what happens to characters like Mary Jane Watson in that definition? Yeah. So, but I understand where he's going. Then he goes on. He says, Now again, to be a true or real first appearance, at least two of the above-mentioned criteria must be met. If only one is met, that is not a first appearance. That's interesting. Uh, in Hulk number 180, Wolverine is seen in the last panel of the book. The panel shows him from head to toe. He speaks, even saying his own name. And he is in costume, as well as showing one of his powers slash abilities. His claws are popped. All three criteria are met in this book. Therefore, Hulk 180 is unquestionably Wolverine's first appearance. I love the passion here. I, I like that. <laughs> um, he brought up a point in there that I thought was kind of interesting. You talked about their um, or the costume. Right. Now, a lot of characters appear before they become something different. You know, sure. Before their uh, hobgoblin or whatnot. You know, the character appeared before that and then Ned later Lee's, become... Right? Ned Lee's. Mm -hmm. Ned later become... Hobgoblin or Green Goblin or whatever. I get them confused all the time. Sure, sure. But I've always wondered about that as well because you'll see something like this is the first appearance of Hobgoblin, but yet the character that plays it appeared a long time ago. Right. Thing. Eddie Brock. Yeah, and exactly. And that's a whole other ball wax because Eddie Brock, they say, appeared in Web of Spider Man 18. His hand. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. No. Okay. I don't yeah. buy it. You know, mm -hmm. and that's up for another debate or whatnot. But I've always been intrigued on when they don the costume. Is that the first appearance of the character? I think right. there was one just recently, and I can't remember what character it was, but they just now became something. Okay. But yet the character has been around a long time. Right. And it's like, okay, is, that's is, is that the first appearance? I don't. I don't know. I've ne I've kind of struggled with that one. Yeah, you know. I mean, you know, people are always going to look for you know hints and clues on on you know where these characters are at and and you know where we we see actual first appearances. You can go on a deep dive for uh, Immortal Hulk, and there's a number of books where he's teased all over the place yeah. before he finally you know comes out in Avengers six eighty four. I think it is. Uh, and that's one. Uh, how, or how about the controversy with Major X, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> we can we talk about the Rob Liefeld thing. Yeah. But bottom line is people found, you know, hints of Major X in these books. They said this is his first appearance. Then Rob Liefeld came out and said adamantly, no, his first appearance is here. Yes. Right? And so, uh, you know, you get these, um, you know, uh, things all over these books. And, of course, people are always wanting to be that one who comes out yeah. and says, I found, yeah. right, what looks to be their first true appearance. And uh, so I, th I don't think we're going to be able to get away from that. Yeah. 
So, let me ask you this. Do you think a test tube is a first appearance? Oh, you're going to go there, huh? Sure. I mean, people always, it's, it's out there. That's, of course, you know, it's the X, uh, what's it, X23 or X23, whatnot? X23, Yeah. Do right. you think a test tube is considered a first appearance? Well, you know, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. I guess it comes down to being, you know, subjective as the reader. You know, what do you feel inside of your heart is the first true appearance? And uh, again, I think we're going to get down to the crux of the matter yeah. in the end of this. Yeah, because obviously uh, X twenty three test dude was not wearing the no, outfit. It's not. It's not even formed yet. Exactly. It's just a tube. It's just a twinkle in her daddy's eye. Kind of like a little ball that <laughs> drops from the little machine at Secret Wars number eight. Exactly. I think those are in the same ballpark right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob, you got another one, but it's a long one. Uh, by Tony Miles. Tony, thank you very much for your comment. And he always gives me the long ones. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, man. He says, comics with Bueller, not there, comics with Bob. There we go. Hey, there you go. It, it, it's good to be in charge. Uh, okay, he says, while the industry usually decides, to me it makes sense that if the character appears in a book, is named, and has dialogue, then that should be considered their first true appearance. The obvious character that comes to mind uh, that there is fan controversy over is Hulk in um, is Wolverine and Hulk 180 versus 181. Yes, Wolverine appears only on the last page of 180, but he takes up a full one third of the page. is clearly visible, not obscured by shadows or having just a portion of his face shown. He is named, has dialogue. So to me, that can constitutes as a first true appearance. That being said, I certainly value my 181 over my 180 as does the market at large. But I would be hard-pressed to part with either book. That's a, that's a great comment. Yeah. I love that. Some people point uh, to the ad that came out uh, for Hulk 181, but no one mentions that said ad is after Hulk 180. And yes, uh, I have those too. <laughs> Another character that seems to have multiple firsts is Mary Jane Watson in Amazing Spider-Man. First mention is her name, first appearance, uh, sorry, first appearance face obscured by uh, a bush or a plant. <laughs> first appearance, however, uh, the first uh, issue seems to count as her first real full appearance is issue 42, where she shows up in just the last two panels of the book and utters the famous face a tiger, you just hit the jackpot line. Uh, one panel is just the back of her head, no jokes this time, and the second shows her face. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Some would say uh, she's not a major character or she's just a supporting character, but she is obviously a major character in Spider-Man, or else why would there be so many mentions of her leading up to her first full appearance? Yeah. In the end, I think the market decides which book has the most value, and in the case of 180 versus 181, I believe that is firmly entrenched and won't be changing. Thanks again for all the thought-provoking questions, guys. This particular one is probably going to be a real hornet's nest. <laughs> That's a great one, Tony. And, uh, you know, really... Uh, you know, thank you for cementing the fact that uh, that's not going to be changing soon. I yeah. think he's right there. <laughs> the, now, the thing, I, he talks about the market, okay? I will just flat out say, I think the market's wrong. I think the market's wrong. I think the market's wrong. I think, and I'm an owner of both the books, okay? So I don't really have a, a dog in the fight. You know, I'm not trying to promote one over, over the other. I have 180 and 181. Mm -hmm. But I truly think the market is wrong on that book. And like I stated before, I think it's because of that cover. Yeah. I think the cover sells that book. But by the, all the criteria that everyone has listed so far and a lot in the comments, Hulk 180 hits that criteria. Word bubble, full character view, suit, powers, all there. It's there. It's there. It's it's there. I think the market is wrong. Like I said, I have both books. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not selling my books. They're very important to me. They're gifts. Right. And uh, but I I truly think this is an instance where they they have it wrong. And whether it gets corrected, I don't think it will. I think it will always be the way it is. Right. But you know, as far as me reading all these comments that I did read for this thing. The common consensus was the 180 is the first true first appearance of the character, mm -hmm. and everything I look backs up that scenario, but yet that's not the one that's sought after. 
You know, I, I have a feeling that you're probably right. If we were to go back 50 years and, uh, you know, go back to where neither one of these books had any value to it, uh, and I'd venture to say that the first appearance of Wolverine didn't start getting onto people's minds until a giant size X-Men number one. And, you know, he, he, you know, he made his appearance inside of the X-Men. Then people started looking for where's the first appearance of this character. Yeah. And I, I would venture to say that, you know, looking at the two books, you know, that you had to choose from back then, uh, I would venture to say that's the reason why they picked that book was yeah. because of the cover. He's on the cover. He's full story inside of the book. And they didn't even look at 180. Yeah. I th like I said before, I think that cover is the thing that does it. Now, he also mentions the uh, Mary Jane, mm -hmm. and that's the issue 42 that I had up there. That's the, the where she has the line, face the tiger, you hit the jackpot. He mentioned that in there. Famous line. Sure. It's the last page of the book. It's a couple of different panels. She's interacting with Peter Parker. She's been in other books. I think it was 25, if I'm not mistaken, where it was mentioned her face is obscured by a bush and it's literally I mean they say the name Mary Jane but you don't see the character nope. you cannot identify the character mm -hmm. I cannot go and look at issue 25 and know who that character is nope. if she showed up on issue 26 right because you do not get a full view you do not know what they look like so you don't know the in 42 you see her whole face from torso up pretty much easy to identify she's saying words all the criteria is met that's her first appearance whole point eight is the same thing right and we're gonna just go back to that over and over <laughs> <laughs> not a problem but i mean you know back then this was stanley having fun yeah right i mean he basically teased the you know the love interest of peter parker for almost two years yeah and you know i i i can't fault that i love the history behind that uh but really you know when it comes to a first i mean a true you know, first appearance, I, I got to go with what the market says on that one. Next one up is Jimbo Fett 74 Comics says, I believe the cameo should be identified as first appearance because it is actually the first time the character is mentioned and seen. Um, th that kind of goes back to my definition I was reading the cameo. Cameo right. is a, a brief appearance of an established character. Right. By definition, that's what the word cameo means. Right. And in comic books, Cameo is not uh, the first appearance, or is not an appearance of an established character. Right. Cameo has always been referred to, oh, I think I just saw a little glance of a new character type. Right, thing. right. It yeah. reminds me of um, you know, the uh, Kevin Costner Robin Hood movie, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you say, say what you want about that movie. When you get to the end, you know, he's defending King Richard's kingdom. Right, Richard the Lionhearted, and the king finally comes, and who is it at the very end, the last twenty seconds of the movie? It's it's uh, um, Sean Connery. Yeah. Right, and everybody like flipped out because it was a cameo, of somebody that we knew sure. and we loved. If you didn't know who Sean Connery was, that scene has no meaning to yeah. you. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it, you brought up a movie, and I'll just use a reference. There was a movie called The Rundown, mm -hmm. with the uh, The Rock was in it. In the very beginning of the movie, he walks into a nightclub. Yeah. And as he's walking by, Arnold Schwarzenegger walks by. That's right. And says, good luck or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Kind of like passing the torch. Right. That's a cameo. That's a cameo. Because that character, Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm -hmm. is an established character. You know who it is. You can identify who that character is right then and there. You know who it is. Exactly. And by definition, you have to be able to do that to con be considered a cameo appearance. That's right. I agree. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little confusing. I mean, the more I dealt, got into this, the more I was confused, to be right. totally honest. You know, because the, the cameo, I was always, oh, a cameo is something like the Mary Jane, what I just mentioned. That's maybe a little cameo. You, it's her. You find out it's her, but you don't see, you can't really identify. But that's not what the definition of a cameo appearance is. Exactly. So, um, I have the next one. This is from Joe uh, Fabry, I believe. It says, hi, Bueller, good question. My only comment is that Amazing Spider-Man 42 mm -hmm. is considered Mary Jane Watson's first full appearance. Even though she only features on the last two panels, then do we consider all last panel appearances as first full appearances of any character? The only thing I can challenge that assumption is that she interacts with Peter Parker by speaking to him in the last panel. So technically, she featured in the issue's story. First appearance or first full appearance, a subjective. 
To me, if a new character interacts with another character in the story of that particular issue in any way, whether it be a speech or action, by definition, it is the first full appearance. That aside, if the new character is only partially drawn or doesn't include any speech in the last panel appearance, then it's just a teaser for the next issue. Keep up the good work, sir. Much appreciated your channel. I, a teaser. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting term to put on a character and you're not being able to identify really that character. Right. Um, I, I think he's kind of right, but I also think that uh, it's, it's, it's hard for me to determine. They're in the book. They're part of the story. You know, whether they say something or not, you know, it's, it's there, it's in the book. It's not an advertisement, and we'll kind of get to that in a little bit. I think there's a comment referring to stuff like that. But it is, they're in the book to be part of the story. They're not in the book to not be part of the story. True. But, I again, you know, I, I think, you know, when I was talking earlier about, you know, serialized storytelling and going to the movies, you know, uh, you do something at the very end to keep the audience coming back. And that's kind of like a teaser. You want yeah. you want a, just a little taste, and and so that's kind of what they're doing in in the arc of their story. They're putting the character in there at the very end, or they're putting a situation that's happening at the very end, so that you're saying, okay, the saga's continuing. I'm going to get some good stuff when I come yeah. back, and I'm going to be excited for it. So just a taste, yeah. and and so I I think using the term teaser is actually a pretty pretty spot on term yeah. you know whether I like it or not is a different thing but I think you know what we're talking about here it kind of hits it on the on the head so first teaser appearance first teaser oh appearance. god <laughs> <laughs> we just got a new term I'm just yeah there you go I'm just talking about it I think it, it, it puts it in into the proper perspective okay whether right. we call it that or not <laughs> teaser. Like first, first teaser first appearance. Teaser you're, appearance. You're, you're here first. <laughs> Joe Fabry thank you so thank much you we got a new one uh, you're up next there Bob Okay, this one comes from Scott uh, Palachik. I think that's how you say it. If I butcher your name, I'm sorry. But thank you for the comment, Scott. He says, Cameo is one page, whereas full appearance is two to three pages. So he actually has a criteria for how many pages there you go. that the person has to be on in order for it to be a first appearance. I mean, that's, in a certain sense, that's fair. Right, I mean, I mean, because if you look at you know, uh, you know how how actors get paid. Yeah. If you are not an established actor, you know, it, it comes down to screen time. How much screen time do you have? Do you have a few seconds? Then you're an extra. Yeah. Right. If you got more than a minute, well, then you're acting in the actual show and you get billing on it. So first, first extra appearance. First extra. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. You know, I mean, but I, I, he has a point there. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's. The pages to me, I don't think that matters. I think it's no. you know, like I said before. I mean, I mean, you could do a lot with two or three pages uh, to establish a character, but you can do just as much on a panel, you know, with uh, just a few word bubbles and stuff and interaction. Absolutely, you know? the interaction on uh, issue forty-two of Amazing Spider-Man with Mary Jane and Peter Parker, that's totally enough to establish that character and who she oh, is. Oh, yeah. And especially if she drops like a famous line. Famous line. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, face it, Tiger, you hit the jackpot. That's a line that, that lasted for years and right, years type right. thing. If you, if you take that line out yeah. and you look at the the, you know, the Spider-Man mythos and you just ask somebody who you who calls Peter Parker Tiger, yeah. every single person would say Mary Jane. That's right. And that was established right then and there. Yeah. I mean, there's certain lines... I mean, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Uncle Ben. That line will set up that character right there. I don't need three or four pages to set up a character. And I'm not talking about the first appearance of him, but I'm, right, say, right. I'm using a line in general for you, the reference. Mm -hmm. But I, the different criteria that people have mm -hmm. is pretty amusing. It is, isn't awesome. it? Awesome. I, I like it because people are very passionate about their books, you know, and it's, the, it's one of the hobbies mm -hmm. that... We all enjoy, but people look at it from different angles sure. all the time. Absolutely. And that's what we're trying to do with all these comments is trying to give you every angle that people are using this for. Right, so right. It's, it, I, I enjoy it. So thank you. That was from Scott, right? Yep. Yeah. 
even though I don't agree with him. It was pretty good. <laughs> so you got there's another Scott. You got that one. There we go. This one comes from uh, Scott Thielen. It looks like I think that's his name. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, Scott. It says I do not consider previews or ads as first appearance. It must be in the story of the comic itself. Hulk 180, not 181. Although I still consider Amazing Spider-Man 300 <laughs> Venom's first appearance. Shadows don't count. This, this is such a bizarre <laughs> comment. It is. Because it contradicts itself. Right. I think he knows that. Uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> because the Amazing Spider-Man 300, okay, he says that's the first appearance of Venom. Mm-hmm. But then he says Hulk 180 is the first appearance of Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Hulk 180 has a lot more in common with Amazing Spider-Man 299 than it does 300. Yeah, that's for sure. So I, I kind of got a kick out of that, Scott. So thank <laughs> you so much. Um, but I uh, let's get the kind of the meat and potatoes when he first started off. I do not consider previews or ads as a first appearance. I totally agree. Yeah. And I've had conversations with Comic Tom about this. I've seen some of his shows talk about that. Yeah, and maybe we don't see eye to eye on this type of thing. Mm-hmm. But I have never felt as though ads or previews or, you know, like Marvel Age would come out and they'd show characters or the ads in the Thor book talking sure. about Wolverine. I've never considered that first appearance of a character. It might be the first time you get to see the character or whatnot or, or something, but it's not in the story. And as we've kind of established, you know, if he's in in the book, he's part of the story. Yeah. So I've never looked at those as being first appearances. There is an exception, and obviously this was brought to light to me. I Tom, it was on one of Tom's episodes, and he was talking about Harley Quinn. And the first appearance of hers was uh, Batman Adventures number twelve, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. But yet there was a children's book. Right. That came out before that. Mm-hmm. That had her in that story of that children's book. It's such a limited scenario to talk about. This is not the normal thing. So it's a, it's a, this is a case by case basis when it comes to this. Sure. So I don't think a lot of weight should be put on that storybook itself. It just is what it is. It doesn't happen very often. And, and to my knowledge, maybe one or two other ones, to be honest. So I don't think the the argument is worth the time on that one. No. I still consider her first appearance to be in the comic book type Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. As far as comics. But I've never considered ads as an appearance or previews or anything like that as a first appearance. It doesn't have the appeal to me to go and get that and say, yep, I got this type thing. Right. It has to be in the book. It has to be something that, to do with the book itself. Yeah. What's your thoughts? So I'm, my, my thoughts on that is, you know, whenever you have any character that's beloved, you're going to have people who, who uh, go above and beyond when it comes to collecting. Uh, and they'll collect anything. Mm-hmm. And and so that's why you get cases where you see, the, you know, the first time an ad comes up about that particular character. Uh, most of your comic collectors are not going to care about that. Yeah. Somebody who loves that character are going to want those ads. They're yeah. going to want those little tidbits of where the character began and when you first started to see them. And, and I think that's more fodder for them. Yeah. Uh, you know, just like with me, I mean, you know how much of a Daredevil fan I am. That's uh, weird. <laughs> there's been a couple of uh, comic books that have come out that are not comic books. They're basically, um, you know, Marvel's way of talking about their artists and doing interviews. Uh, there's one that came out, um, you know, in the 80s that had an interview with Klaus Janssen in it. I got that that particular issue signed by him at yeah. Pro City Comic Con. Matter of fact, I got two of them signed. I gave one of them to uh, from Heroes to Icons, Jason. Sure. And um and, and you know, but I, I'm a purist. Most people they have no idea about that book. They don't care about that book. I care about it because it was Klaus Jansen's first big interview, and it was kind of a fanzine about Daredevil. How, how often do you find that? Yeah. And so I'm a purist. So when it comes to stuff like that, I think, you know, if you really love a character, you're going to find that stuff out. Does it constitute a first true appearance or anything? I, when it comes to collecting in comic books, I don't think so. Yeah. Right. And again, the market is usually going to dictate that. But I think when it comes to that type of stuff, it's going to be people who are deep dive fanatics on a particular character. Yeah. Now, I, I look at like things like uh, that went into comic book form before mm-hmm. they were in comics, like sure. say a movie type thing. Mm-hmm. Say, uh, we'll just throw this out there if anyone knows. Uh, the Last Starfighter. Oh, yeah. A movie from the Love 80s. Love that movie. Okay. 
the movie came out. They made a comic book about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, that's is that the first char- appearance of that character in the comic book, or is it the first appearance that was in the movie? It's the first appearance in the movie, and then it's the first appearance of a character in a comic book. It's right. two separate things. Exactly. Um, it, not a very popular comic book. Or what, it was only like a four-issue series, but right. a lot of those movies back then got translated into comic book sure. form. But they were already established characters. Some of you guys might not know what I'm talking about, but it's an awesome movie. Go check yeah, it out. Yeah. It's great graphics and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, First uh, time. you know, when, when something is established and then goes to comic book form, do people consider that a first appearance? So we ask that question again? When something is established right, and then goes into a comic book form, mm-hmm. is that considered their first appearance in comics? Yeah, I, I, I do believe it's the first appearance in comics. And I think if you look at Overstreet Price Guide, you know, back in the day, it would even say that. You know, that particular first appearance in comic books. Okay. All right. And so, like, you know, when, when Star Wars came out, that was Luke Skywalker's first appearance in a comic book. Yeah. It wasn't his first appearance as a whole. Sure. But first appearance in comics for sure. sure. And and so I, I do believe that there is, you know, they do differentiate that. I differentiate it. Uh, and, you know, we have comic book adaptations, you know, happening all the time. Now, you go with Star Wars, a well-known one. I go with Starfighter. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> True science. You're going to go deep cuts, yeah, man. You go. You're going to go deep cuts. Star Trek. I don't know. Anything <laughs> <laughs> Star. Uh, okay, we got one last comment. Yeah. And uh, this is from CMA Thunder. We've read his comments before. Mm-hmm. His comment is sh- short and sweet. Follow the money. That's your first appearance. <laughs> I love it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You know, not a question. Here's a comment that just cuts right to the chase. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. Follow the money. Wherever the money's at, that's the first appearance. Yep. <laughs> um, I enjoy that comment. I, I like how straightforward it was. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, this conversation is a little bit deeper than that. And like I said earlier, I think the market is wrong, and the market is obviously based on the money. Mm-hmm. And I think it's wrong. Yeah. I think that 180 should be the one that you want. And I think 181 should be the the uh, secondary book they get. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, Amazing Spider-Man 299 should be the one that you want. And then 300 should be the secondary one. Um, the same thing, I believe, um, who is it? Uh, Gambit made the first appearance of X-Men Annual number 14. Mm-hmm. That's his first appearance. But... X Men, I believe it's two sixty six. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. I'm sorry. Two sixty seven. I forget. Yeah, is considered his first appearance. Yeah, that's his I first think. appearance. Um, <laughs> I think that the market gets some things wrong. The most glaring one, like we said, is Hulk one that we've been talking yeah. right now. But like you said, follow the money. That's where the money is. The money is for the Hulk one eighty one, which is this one, mm-hmm. and it's not quite there. Although this book is gaining traction, mm-hmm. you know. It is starting to jump up a little bit. But that's the first appearance of Wolverine. That is the first appearance of Wolverine. By all the comments that we have down below that we read, by all the standards that kind of pop out, full character, full costume, word bubble, introduction, it's there. That's the first appearance of Wolverine. Yeah. Tell that guy who has, <laughs> tell that guy who has his number 181. The 9.8 signed by both Roy Thomas and Stan Lee, selling for 30 grand. That number 180 is the actual yeah, first appearance. I, I have a friend. <laughs> One of my good friends has a 9.8. 181. He's probably going to uh, not unsubscribe after he watches right, this. Right, right. <laughs> but like just, I said. You just you know, killed me, Bueller. Yeah. You took me right to the heart. <laughs> exactly. He let me hold it one time. That was about it. But. I have them both. When in doubt, just get them both, right, or right. all three, whatever you want to do. But uh, any last thoughts on this first appearance conversation? Uh, you know, really what it comes down to is is what you value as a collector. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you value the 181 as his first appearance, then, then treat it as so. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that the market should have any bearing on where your heart's at when you collect. Yeah. Uh, that That's my thought on it. If you like a comic book, go out and get that one and show it off. Tell people this is what I think is the first appearance, and you know, to tell the rest, <laughs> tell the rest of the market to, to go fly a kite if you want. But really, follow your heart, people. There you go. Yeah, as long <laughs> as you're happy with what you have, that's all that counts, really. Absolutely. And uh, you know, this we didn't accomplish anything on this, no, <laughs> this conversation. No. To I be mean, honest, this one will go on for years and years, and it's great. It's it is honestly, it is. it's a great conversation to have. 
Which is why we do this. Yes. And uh, thank you so much to everyone who left a comment. I read every one of them. I right. sat down there and I read every one of them. And it was hard to put this list together because there were so many of them. And then people are, are leaving uh, responses on the other copy video as well right. to this question. So I'm like looking at those as well. So thank you so much. We didn't accomplish a thing, but that's all right. We had a, a, a good time talking about absolutely, it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very much so. Um, so anyway, that's the end of this topic. I want to kind of give you guys a sneak peek of this next week's topic. Uh, you need to watch the preview video that comes out this Wednesday. And please watch that video and then leave a comment down below on this topic. And the topic is going to be, is Overstreet Price Guide still relevant for price in today's market? Oh, that's a great question. Yes. Great question. As a lot of you guys know, I've done some experiments, mm -hmm. eBay versus Overstreet type thing. Right. The outcome has been very interesting, to say the least. Results shocked me. Yes. And if you haven't seen those videos, we'll probably put a link to some of those at the end of this video if you want to watch. But let me say it again. The question for this week, and you need to watch the preview video on Wednesday and leave a comment down below, is Overstreet still relevant for price in today's market? Here we go. I'm curious to see what Bob says on this. He's never <laughs> actually let me know. So there we go. that's going to be the question. And like I said, we have a ton of questions coming up, and they're all really good ones. Yeah, so absolutely. I can't wait. It's exciting. Um, I want to take a minute and uh, thank my Patreon members who are supporting the channel. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to give last names, so I'll just do first names mm -hmm. for right now. Uh, John, thank you so mm -hmm. much. Damien, thank you so much. Robert, uh, comic book G Spot. I know who that. Everyone knows who that. Everyone knows who that. that is. Thank you so much, Pete. Thank you. He was actually my second person, and then Mike. He was actually the first person to sign up for the Patreon channel. He's the one that kind of outed me when I didn't want anyone to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't sign up for it. So there you go. So uh, thank you to everyone who signed up on the Patreon. It does help us out a lot, and it keeps the channel going. And it keeps the conversation going yeah. as well. So appreciate that. Um, I think that's it. I think we covered, like I said, we're not doing the first and final five just because this conversation was going to go a long time. And I didn't want to make a two-hour video. There so we that's go. pretty much it. <laughs> uh, Bob, why don't you tell them about your channel real quick? So uh, my channel is Everything Comics. Uh, I also have a coffee, a coffee video that drops on Saturdays. Uh, where I review a little spoilery, some comics as I hang out in a coffee shop. Sometimes my good friend Bueller is on with me, as well as Sam from Sam's Tangle Web. Sometimes we have Damien, uh, Sleepy Reader 666 on there. Uh, but it's a really good time. Uh, like I said, drops on Saturdays. I was going to start a new show this week, but you can check out my latest video and find out why I didn't drop that. Uh, but Come on. A lot of stuff going, a lot of stuff happening, a lot of stuff going forward, and I'm really enjoying uh, comics right now. Awesome, man. So am I. It's good stuff. Good conversations. All right, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know what to do. We'll see you next time. Bye.